Chris, I want to take a minute and, and talk to our listeners about it. I believe it would be very easy in listening to this conversation to have already gone, I don't have enough to need an estate plan. I don't have enough to need a trust. We hear that all the time. So I want to share a story with you about uh, some young people who came in to see me a few years back. There was a a brother and sister uh, whose mom had passed away from cancer, and the brother and sister were in their 20s. And they came in and said, you know, when you're in your 20s, you're still kind of getting established in life. It's not like they had the ability to cover their own expenses and then a lot on top of that because it's still early in their adult life. And so they came in and said, look, uh, mom didn't have a trust and she still had a mortgage on the house and we don't know what to do because we can't, between the brother and the sister, we can't continue to make the payments cover the taxes and insurance on the house, keep up the utilities, and do our own stuff, what do we do? And we had to get to the point where I I just told them, I said, look, get everything out of the house that matters to you and just let it go. Now, I will tell you, if their mom had known that her decision to not have a trust in place was going to lead to them losing all of the equity that she had built up in that house... Uh, and the emotional impact of it and the the energy drain, all of that, I feel like she would have made a different decision had she known. Right. So, Chris, talk to that, that segment of the population that goes, well, I think trusts are for multimillionaires. Right. Yeah, and that concept is definitely out there because we yeah. think of, you know, societally we think of like trust fund kids who don't have to work but that's not what these are for so really the big selling point of doing a trust-based estate plan is the ease of administration you Mm -hmm. know in in the in the example that you just gave they would have had to go to court and somebody be in charge and you've got to get a hearing and you're talking weeks or months down the road before anybody has the legal authority to even make a decision Mm -hmm. whereas in a trust you've nominated somebody to take over the second that you pass away yeah and they can just step in and do the things that they need to do, maybe immediately sell a house mm-hmm. to avoid a foreclosure or whatever it is. Yeah. So really, it's just more of an ease of administration as opposed to, to conceptualizing, I need to have X number of dollars as a net worth before I do mm-hmm. really concrete, thorough planning. I think it gets tied, too, sometimes to the thought of if you're going to have to be uh, paying the inher- an inheritance tax, right? I don't have that many assets that that's right. going to be in play. But there, I think you've highlighted that the, the needs go greatly beyond that 